Swinging an axe can be intimidating and I am here to help. A little bit of guidance goes a long way. So here are my 10 tips for learning to carve with an axe safely and effectively. I've been asked a lot of times if I still have all of my fingers, so I'm going to show you how I still do. Number one is the first thing you do when you pick up your axe, which is make sure it's sharp. A blunt axe is more dangerous than a sharp axe, because a sharp axe will bite into the wood and won't glance off and run in directions you don't expect. I've talked about axe sharpening before on my channel and you can find those videos, but I like to use a small pocket stone and just quickly dress up both sides of the axe. It doesn't have to be laser sharp, it just has to be sharp enough to bite you with a thumbnail and I think that's good enough. Give it a little strop if you're feeling extra. Number two, if you want to chop a surface that's flat, square and true, one of the most important things is actually how you stand. So first of all, clear your space of any obstructions that you might trip on, and then put your left foot forward if you're right-handed, and your right foot back, and bend from the hips like this. Number three, a lot of people are a bit afraid of their axe, so they hold it with a death grip. Don't. You should be holding onto it loosely, just kind of steering it towards the target. And the target isn't the spoon, it's the block. You're always going to hit the block, so just imagine that you're carving straight through the spoon and you're hitting the block on every swing. I like to use my wrist and give it a little bit of a flick towards the block, and I'm using gravity to help. Remember to use gravity to help and try not to tie yourself out. Number four. It's really important to always swing your axe straight up and down in the middle of the block and I'll show you why. Right, so here I want to make a high angle chop to break up the grain of the billet, and I'm going to keep swinging my axe straight up and down, and to achieve the angle I'm going to angle the wood instead of the axe. Now this is important because if I miss the billet, I'm going to go straight past it and hit the block. So if I'm axing stra straight up and down, that's no problem. If I'm axing at a funny direction, my axe could go anywhere, including into my body. So you always want to be axing straight up and down. Number five, when your axe gets bound up in the grain of the wood, you don't want to be trying to pull it out. You want to either lever it out to break the grain and let go of the axe, or to pick up the whole package and give it a tap on the block to keep that wood chip going all the way to the end. Here what I'm doing is always chopping in just about the same spot, and that's going to help my axe to slide into the chip that I've already made and sort of smoothly chase it down the billet all the way to the desired goal. And as you can see, I'm always twisting and breaking the grain out of the way as I go. Number six. For some parts of the carving process, it's important to be able to use either the heel or the toe of your axe precisely to get the goal that you want. So for example, here, I'm axing in the top part of the crank of the spoon. I'm working across the grain and I want the tip of my axe to be tracing the crank line all the way down from the top to the bottom. So you can see I'm using the curved bit of the axe to sort of sweep the tip straight down that bottom area so that I end up with two planes that meet each other evenly. Number seven. Axing is much easier if instead of trying to swing it really hard, you keep up a rhythm and you try and get a bit of a flow going where you're consistently chopping the same spot, your axe is always on target, and if you don't miss, then you'll find things get much easier for you when you sort of keep up a regular motion. Many hits make light work and it's definitely more about consistency, accuracy and rhythm than it is about sort of power and the force that you're putting in. Number eight. Now this one is an extension of the point about chopping straight up and down. We're going to, um, to specify that down to working around a curve here. 
So I'm using the scallop in my block to support the shoulder of the spoon and as I'm chopping straight up and down, always in the same place, I move the hand that's holding the spoon back and forth to create a different angle for each chop which is going to get me that curved surface that I'm looking for. What I'm doing here on the back of the bowl is the exact same principle, moving my hand up and down and keeping a consistent chopping motion, chopping rhythm with the axe. That's going to allow me to cut a nice curved surface in an efficient way with as few strokes as possible. And here you can watch it again on the plan view of the spoon. Number nine is something I do all the time, which is when I don't feel like going to get my carving knife, I like to use a guillotine cut to clean up the lines of my blanks. So depending on the grain direction of the area you're carving, you either place the heel or the toe of your axe firmly onto the block, and then using your body weight, you push the blade through the wood like a guillotine. It's helpful to have an axe that has a good beard on it because that allows you to get your fingers right up under the bit and I like to put my index finger onto the bit to sort of stabilize it and help control that direction. And for this technique to work your axe obviously needs to be very sharp so that ties into point number one. Number 10, confidence. Now confidence is something I talk about all the time when I'm teaching my workshops. And that's because I feel that learning to carve a spoon and especially learning to use the ax is about 30% technique and 70% confidence. So you can learn everything that you need to know, but you need to have the confidence to execute it the way that you've been taught. So what I think that people should do when they're learning to carve is to first of all stay within your comfort zone when you're just learning don't get too daring don't try to be a hero with the axe but just sort of take take baby steps and and make sure you're carving safely but once you feel that you're starting to develop a level of comfort with it that's when I suggest to people to actually you know lift the axe a bit higher swing it a bit further try and really make use of gravity Try to um, get the most out of each swing of the axe. And that is when people really start to click with the technique. They're not sort of fighting against the axe anymore, but they're starting to feel that real sort of extension of your hand analogy that a lot of woodworkers use when they're talking about their favorite tools. So if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. And for the rest of the video, Feel free to stick around because I'm going to show you the whole process of carving this spoon blank with the axe. And if you pay attention, you should notice just about every one of these 10 tips that I've given you are embedded into my process. Thanks for watching and happy carving.